So in today's video, we're going to talk about C19, you know, the, the virus that is circulating. And I would like to share with you a paper and the title of the paper is shelter from the cytokine storm, healthy living as a vital preventative strategy in the COVID-19 era. So this is something that we've been talking about on this channel since January of 2020. Now, for those of you that are still here, still subscribing, I want to say thank you. Thank you for trusting in this idea, this premise that if we build our body's resilience and make the host more healthy, that we will be more resilient to guess what infectious disease pathogens, whether they're old or new. And guess what? Now we have scientists in academia who are echoing this very sort of common sense approach. We know that weak, uh, overweight, uh, animals, uh, you know, sedentary animals, animals that are stressed out or not sleeping, they are the first to die when there's, say, a flu outbreak uh, or a, a swine flu or uh, avian flu or something like that. So the same applies to humans. You are an animal as well. Now, um, I want to share this video with you and share this article because you probably have skeptical friends and family, coworkers, you know, your neighbors in your life who are like, come on, exercise, like, give me a break. I'm already immunized. But well, guess what? If you exercise, you make immunizations more efficacious. So I want to read to you uh, some of the some of the actual verbatim uh, text here, and we can throw up some images on the screen here. So one of the themes that we've talked about on this channel uh, with regards to this viral outbreak is it's a syndemic. So you have an epidemic and a pandemic coming together. So one is making the other worse. So the epidemic of chronic diseases, the hypertension, the diabetes, the obesity are making the pandemic worse. We've known that. So we need to address those chronic diseases because that primes the pump to have this cytokine storm that is really what causes severe COVID complications. Now, again, amazing images here. So sedentary activity, high glycemic processed food mixed with um, a lot of stress and uh, sleep perturbations set up the storm. And I'll, I'll share with you on the screen here now uh, a much more uh, color text and enriched image uh, here. Uh, talking about this, so the unhealthy phenotype priming the pump for increased severity for COVID-19 infection. So um, basically what these authors are suggesting is really call, a call to action to other folks in academia, suggesting that we study the, the outcomes of physical activity, of good, healthy, whole food nutrition, stress reduction and sleep, and how that can be a preventative strategy going forward to prevent unnecessary lockdowns and school closures and business closures and because yeah, all of those things have a lot of side effects and they are costly economically and from a long-term health perspective. Okay, so um, let me just, and, and they go on and talk about this NLR P3 inflammasome. And I think that's, that's worth kind of revisiting. Uh, about this time last year, we conducted several videos, one with Brianna Stubbs, where we talked about the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting affecting this key intracellular signaling switch called NL the NLRP3 inflammasome. Now this is upstream to downstream inflammatory products like uh, the interleukins, interleukin-6, interleukin-1, TNF-alpha. So when you're inflamed, this NLRP3 inflammasome tricks on, uh, you know, is activated and that increases your body's systemic inflammation. So that primes the pump so that if you are exposed to a pathogen such as C19, that you are more likely to then have something like a cytokine storm and that will cause a lot of collateral damage. So again, this is where exercise, stress reduction, whole real food and stress management uh, and uh, sleep come in. So I would like to read to you just you know a summary on, on this abstract and you can share this with friends and family and I will put links below to, uh, to this article. Okay, through this graphical review, we will demonstrate unhealthy lifestyle characteristics, chronic disease risk factors, and diagnoses for COVID-19 outcomes, and how they're intricately linked, creating a new global syndemic. Again, a syndemic is this coalescence or convergence of an epidemic of chronic disease with an infectious disease outbreak. It is also clear that a primary way to uncouple this syndemic is through increasing healthy living behaviors. As illustrated in this graphical review, moving forward, healthy living medicine should be practiced with renewed vigor uh, to improve human resilience uh, to health threats posed by chronic diseases and viral infections. So friends, Okay, this is coming to you from researchers at University of Chicago. Uh, these are schools here, uh, Queensland School of Medicine, New Orleans. This is Commonwealth University, Richmond, Virginia. This is not some right-wing conspiracy theorist. You know, these are, these are academic folks probably getting funding from NIH grants, okay? They are promoting healthy living. So 
let's just take a step back. You're like, well, no one on the media has said this. Why hasn't Dr. So-and-so that's always on CNN or MSNBC said anything about this? When, when, why, okay, just because this doctor or that doctor that you see on TV a lot doesn't mention this, it doesn't mean it's not true. So we need to realize that uh, everyone has their biases and their, their knowledge gaps. And some people are just very focused in one specific area. My biases are healthy living, exercise, preventative medicine, right? So I naturally gravitate towards that. But if, if all you know is immunizations and antiviral therapies and you don't know the importance of healthy living, then when you're interviewed on the media, that's all you talk about is those sort of treatments. So we need to understand that again, just because you're not hearing about this on NPR or CNN doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Researchers are talking about this. So we need to start making healthy living choices, uh, better choices, practice the 80-20 principle. You can still have a, a donut or a cake pop or whatever. It's just, you don't wanna make that a core part of your daily diet, right? So we wanna encourage exercise, stress reduction, balancing your sleep, and eat whole real food. So I just had to share this with you again. It was published in a peer-reviewed academic journal called Progress in Cardiovascular Diseases, which I believe this, it's a part of the Azelvier Journal Network. So great images, something to share with friends or family, especially those friends or family who are doing all the safety precautions but are not improving their diet and lifestyle and reducing their risk of chronic disease. So if you're a fan of this message, please hit that like button. Please share this article in this video with the people that you care about in your life so that we can, you know, a high tide lifts all boats. We need to make all people, including our children, more healthier so that if we do have a second or third or fifth or whatever wave, you know, in the winter time, we, we don't want to close schools again. We don't want to close businesses and gyms again. We want to, uh, you know, social connection is a, an important facet of health, friends. So uh, thanks for being part of this message and sharing the healthy living is a viable, sustainable solution forward. And thanks for sharing this article. We'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.